In 2008, Polaris introduced the first Pure Sports side-by-side -side machine with their 50-inch wide, powerful and nimble Razor. Just one year later, they released the 60-inch wide Razor S. The Razor S offered an increase in stability, 12 full inches of suspension travel, and a slight boost in engine performance, raising the bar in side-by-side -side performance even further. The following year, in 2010, Polaris released the Razor 4, a stretch limo version of the Razor S, which allowed drivers to bring up to three friends along for the ride. Determined to remain at the head of the class which they created, Polaris has been hard at work developing their next generation of performance side-by-side, -side, the 2011 Razor XP900. For those of you not familiar with Polaris's XP line of ATVs and now side-by-sides, the XP stands for Extreme Performance. We will tell you now, when it comes to the Razor XP900, Extreme Performance is not an exaggeration, as the XP900 takes performance side-by-sides to a whole new level. I'm John Kostanek, I'm the product manager for all Razor products, and today I'm here with the all-new Razor XP. It's the side-by-side -side we built for Extreme Performance. Three things I want to talk about as an overview. Uh, first one is power. The new Razer XP features the ProStar 900 EFI engine. It's a dual overhead cam, four valve engine, 180 degree crankshaft, uh, red lines at 8750, so it's a high revving, high powered engine built specifically for the Razer XP. It's a high performance engine. Uh, it puts out 100 horsepower per liter, so at 875 cc's, it cranks out 88 horsepower. A couple cool features about it, it, it has a 180 degree crank, so it's naturally balanced. You got your crank, your pistons at opposite ends of stroke at all times. Dual overhead cam, four valve engine. So what that gives the consumer is a higher revving engine to get the power uh, band where you want it on the side by side. Thanks to the, the design of the intake that maximizes flow into dual 46 millimeter throttle bodies located right next to the head. Now, a big change we had on the Razor XP is the intakes are located on, uh, on the sides of the vehicle. And on this side is the air intake for the engine, and on that side it's the, the PVT system. Now, the, the cool thing is it's drawing fresh air in here, but you'll notice it has a funny shape here. It kind of uh, snakes around. If water ever gets sprayed in there, you're washing your vehicle. It, it's really not a concern because the water collects down in the low point, and you'll see a little uh, spigot here. We call it a duck bill, and the water just drains right out. So on this bike with the plastic stripped off, you may wonder what this box is. Uh, we call this the resonator box, and it does two things. It reduces the intake noise that our consumers hear because it's like a, a big muffler to dampen that noise, or reduce the noise uh, of the air coming into the engine. But it serves another purpose. It also is a big reservoir or, or buffer that holds the air at the ready push that throttle down and you have air ready to go into the throttle body so the air is in here it's a huge intake hose going into the air box it's a large uh, air box featuring a flat panel and this this air filter uh, it is deceiving perhaps but it is a high flow filter it has 90 percent more area uh, than the filter used on razor and razor s uh, it's important to have a tuned intake but it's also important to have a tuned exhaust and the ProStar 900 has a huge all stainless steel exhaust that exits towards the front of the vehicle and wraps around the engine. Uh, so it's a tune length exhaust, stainless steel for both corrosion resistance and strength. The ProStar 900 cranks out 88 horse at the crank. I want to talk about how we get that horsepower from the engine efficiently to the ground. Check out the new PVT system. Uh, this PVT system features a new drive clutch it's a high performance drive clutch uh, featuring zero lash, large clutch buttons, uh, transferring to a belt that's the strongest belt that Polaris makes into an all new driven clutch that matches the performance of the Razor XP. After the power gets to the, the driven clutch, it goes into a very high, efficient new compact transmission we designed specifically for the Razor XP. It actually weighs less than the transmission we use in the Razor uh, 800 and the Razor S and the Razor 4, uh, but
but it transfers 65% more power to the ground. And the way we do that and, and keep it so compact and efficient is it features five drive shafts inside that have helical cut gears and are mounted on roller bearings. So it's very efficient and, uh, and compact. All those shafts rotate in the same direction as the engine and there are no right angle drives that rob power. The only chain in this transmission is the reverse chain. And the only right angle drive is the right angle drive that powers, that sends power up to the front gear case. Now we talked about how we efficiently get power to the rear wheels. Like all other Razors, the Razor XP is an all-wheel drive side by side, so it's also important to get power to the front wheels. So power comes out of the transmission, runs to the front gear case, and in the front gear case, it's a heavy-duty front gear case featuring large bearings to transfer the load and has a billet aluminum cage. And this is a, a feature that you'll find uh, aftermarket that, that uh, retails for hundreds of dollars and it, it provides the durability consumers are looking for. The second thing I want to talk about is suspension. Razor XP was built for extreme performance, so it has extreme suspension. 14 inches of travel in the back, 13 and a half inches in the front and a whopping 13 inches of ground clearance. The front suspension on the new Razor XP features 13 and a half inches of suspension travel. It has dual A-arms and Fox Podium X 2.0 shocks that are compression and preload adjustable. The new trailing arm on the Razor XP is a three-link design. It has a large trailing arm with wide mounting points. That means the trailing arm mounts way forward and it has radius rods that mount close to the center of the vehicle. Now we picked this suspension uh, because it matches the extreme performance of the new Razor XP compared to the dual A-arms on the Razor 800 or Razor S, uh, which are matched for the performance of those vehicles. What the trailing arm gives you is it allows you to get that enormous uh, suspension travel of 14 inches while minimizing scrub and optimizing camber. So camber is very important because it's not just all about straight line uh, driving. It's, we all know we drive our side by sides and, and cornering is very important. Uh, third thing I want to talk about is agility. We didn't just take a Razor S and put a larger engine in it. Check out the all new chassis designed for the Razor XP. It cradles the new ProStar 900 engine and transmission. It still has the same DNA as the rest of the Razor lineup where the engine is behind the seat, which means a lower center of gravity uh, so you, you have that confidence inspiring feeling when you're driving the vehicle. It also has uh, a wider or longer wheelbase, just over four inches, and that gives puts the rubber in the corners so uh, it, it's a more sure-footed design and it's four inches wider at 64 inches wide. So the agility is matched to the performance, the extreme performance uh, of the Razor XP. So we take that 88 horsepower that the new ProStar 900 cranks out, send it through a very efficient transmission so you get the most power to the wheels, and you combine it with a lightweight chassis, and you get the best power to weight ratio in any side-by-side -side on the market today. So as a quick overview, uh, that's power, suspension, agility that when you combine them together, make the extreme performance of the all new Razor XP. After taking a short loop in the other Polaris Razor vehicles to re-familiarize ourselves with their performance, we strapped ourselves into the XP and headed out into the Arizona desert. On the 15 mile per hour road leaving base camp, the XP was kind of deceiving as its exhaust note wasn't particularly loud or rumbly from the cockpit. As soon as the speed restrictions were lifted though, we stabbed the gas pedal and immediately realized that the ProStar 900 engine produces a serious amount of instantly available power. The thrust provided by the ProStar 900 engine is unlike anything we've experienced in a stock side-by-side. -side. We would compare the power to the fully modified Muzzy's 840 kitted Funko Terra X we tested a while back, although the Polaris XP runs considerably cooler and is bone stock. The XP produces good low-end power, although it could be easily overlooked due to the engine's massive mid-range and screaming top end. Power is available at any point in the RPM range and throttle response is instant, even at 60 miles per hour in a rock-covered silt bed. 
The XP is said to top out at 75 miles per hour, but we never found a place flat and straight enough to push it to the limit. The Razor XP's handling was super stable and sure-footed. Test rider Rob Freedy drove it like a madman all day, never coming close to finding the limits of the vehicle's stability in corners, thanks to its extra width and minimal body roll. The XP is pretty predictable through the turns, although the super responsive engine and longer wheelbase made the rear end brake loose easier than the other Razor models. Flip it into all-wheel drive and you can exit corners more predictably with little concern for throttle control. Unfortunately, making the switch to all-wheel drive has little effect on the machine's steering. Did you ever think you could wheelie a side-by-side? -side? Well, with so much power and superb weight balance, we could carry the front end over some whoop sections. The power and balance also played a huge role in making this the best jumping side-by-side -side we've ever driven, stock or modified. Roll on the gas launching off of jumps and the XP flies straight and true. We actually landed on the rear wheels almost every time we went big, further boosting our confidence and control. Although it sounds cliche, when it comes to eating up big jumps or two and a half foot deep whoops, the XP suspension actually worked better the faster we drove it, and that's no BS. We never bottomed either end hard off of jumps and laughed like schoolgirls, floating across whoops that would have caused us to crash our brains out on any other stock side by side. With so much travel, Polaris was able to soften up the first few inches of movement, providing a plusher ride over small stutter bumps compared to their other Razor models. Stopping power on the 900 is well matched to the engine's exceptional performance. The brakes not only provide a massive amount of binding force, they mimic the feeling of automotive brakes, allowing you to easily modulate the amount of braking force used. Ergonomically, the Razor XP feels very similar to the other Razor models, with comfortable seats and a recessed heel pocket below the gas pedal, which makes throttle modulation easy. There's also the much appreciated oh shit bar for passengers to hold onto, a feature that no side-by-side -side should be without. Feeling that we must complain about something, the machine's steering, which is 20% more responsive than the other Razor models, also provides a bit more unwanted feedback to the steering wheel from trail obstacles. We wondered why the XP900 wasn't made available with power steering, and we were glad to find out that the vehicle is already wired for it, and that Polaris is planning on releasing an accessory power steering unit in the near future. Perhaps Polaris could have equipped the machine with 5-point restraints to match the rest of the machine's extreme performance. Finally, we hope that the aftermarket can come up with a tire that won't be shredded by the 900's engine. After just two days of use, the tough ITP 900 rear tires were showing significant wear. While its base price of $15,999 may seem a bit staggering, go ahead and buy any other side-by-side -side on the market. Add five or $6,000 in aftermarket performance parts, and chances are you won't wind up with a machine that's as capable or reliable as the bone stock Polaris XP900. Polaris has set a new standard for their competitors to aim for, and they better aim high. We were blown away by the performance of the 2011 Polaris Razor XP900 and are absolutely sure you will be too. For more information on the all new Polaris Razor XP900 or their full line of side-by-sides and ATVs, log on to PolarisIndustries.com. Wow. That was fantastic.